Good day everybody and welcome back to DX Explorer. So um, as you saw in the intro, today I'm uh, working again on the Michigan Mighty Might. So I built the first version of the Michigan Mighty Might, very similar to the one um, that used to be available in a kit uh, made by QRP guys. And uh, yeah, unfortunately, I don't know what happened. I used the BD-139, which uh, for some reason only gave me 100 milliwatts um, output power. And I've built a bunch of coils that you can see here and many other more. And also uh, many other versions um, using toroids. And I was still getting that uh, 100 milliwatts output power. So I decided to uh, try and build the original design with the 31 millimeters uh, PVC pipe. And uh, I think it's uh, in millimeters is 0 0.6 or 0 0.7 millimeters um, wire and uh, for the 40 meters band so I drew a very quick sketch on how I'm going to arrange the parts on the little board that I wanted to make and uh, I also prepared the PCB uh, that I've made for this and uh, I'm just gonna put it together and see if I can get more than 100 milliwatts output uh, because I was a little bit disappointed comparing it to the 10 minutes transmitter which uh, if I remember well it gave me somewhere around 700 milliwatts or 1 watt power output so yeah I'm just gonna put it together and uh, test it and uh, see the power output that I can get uh, from this one it's going to be a quick and short video as I'm not trying to, to waste your time since I already built this uh, this uh, transmitter um, I tried uh, sticking to the original schematic uh, here we have the variable capacitor that will help me adjust the transmitter and um, here I have the uh, input for the key a green LED that will show me that it's powered on a red LED that will light up every time I'm transmitting and pretty much that's the all the modifications that I did to the original design I also have a low pass filter in here and uh, other than that, it's built with a 2N2222 uh, transistor, which I can take out and replace very easily in case uh, <laughs> uh, I'm burning it. And I also uh, decided to keep the crystal that uh, I can remove it and place it back on the, on the board if I want to. And I'll explain you why I did that in a little bit. Uh, but yeah, it's easy to... Um, change the frequency by just uh, replacing the filter and the, the main coil it's uh, just as it was in the original design built on a 31 millimeters PVC pipe 21 turns for the primary with a tap on 14 turns and the secondary it's uh, 4 turns uh, the wire that I used is 0 0.7 millimeters which I believe it's a 22 gauge wire if I remember well and I have two, tur uh, two turns for the coil that will power the red LED. Um, it's pretty much uh, picking up RF and it's lighting up the red LED that will show me um, every time the transmitter hits transmitting. <laughs> and um, also I get to adjust the, um, the, tr uh, the transmitter using the same red LED in case I don't have a, an RF watt meter or anything else to measure the power output. Um, so I found it very helpful. Now, the reason I decided to uh, keep this um, crystal that I can remove it, it's basically to change the frequency. And also, uh, I decided to also use this transmitter every time I'm trying to build any uh, receivers on the 40 meters band and I have a crystal for uh, 7023 megahertz that will help me to uh, tune the receiver on the lower band and find the band easier the amateur radio band and I also have another crystal for 7.2 megahertz which will help me to set up the receiver for the higher part of the band since I'm not going all the way up to 7.3 megahertz but yeah it's pretty easy and uh, 
it's helpful <laughs> to, to find the band easier, especially in the days with low propagation. So I'm also using this transmitter as a tool. Sounds really nice. Um, we're going to test it right now. And also we are going to test the power output and see if I get more than 100 milliwatts uh, that I used to get um, at first with the first version of the transmitter that I built. And honestly, I was not very happy about but it looked nice, but this one looks nicer. And I'll keep it as a memory. <laughs> it's my Michigan Mighty Might old school build. So let's test it out. All right, so we are going to key down the transmitter. It looks like I'm getting about 100 milliwatts power output, just a little bit over 100 milliwatts with a capacitor all the way down. If you take a look at the red LED, I know how well uh, you can see it. But uh, the more I turn the variable capacitor, the LED will turn brighter. And it looks like here is the brightest spot. If I look on the watt meter, it's showing me about 200 milliwatts, I guess. That's all I can get with this one. Now, if, I, if you remember uh, from the video from the last one uh, where I was talking about the PTT or CW transmitter and I told you that I found an issue with uh, some of the trans uh, the transistors not all of them gave me the same power output even though they were all um, 2N2222 22 and uh, this might be the issue in here I might get uh, more power uh, using different transistors so later on I'm gonna start and search and see if I can find the one that will give me a little bit more power but I did, I did use the um, other ones. I had like three of them that I tried and um, with some of them I got even lower output power. Um, also the BD-139 I'm also suspecting as I was saying um, in the in the PTTCO uh, video that uh, the BD-139 that I have uh, it's probably some cheap version uh, most probably built in China and uh, very bad quality. It was <laughs> giving me 100 milliwatts power output on the other version of the of the Michigan Mighty Might that I made. And with the dummy load, it can also add together with the receiver. It would also uh, double as a as, um, audio generator, to say like that, uh, if you want to learn um, the Morse code. So um, yeah, it's both a tool and also a transmitter at the same time. But it was really fun to build and uh, I'm quite excited about the way it turned out, more like an old school look. So even though the power output is not as um, I was expecting, something around at least 300 milliwatts, maybe up to 500 milliwatts, I'm still happy with this little project. Um, yeah, comparing it to the 10 minutes transmitter, once again, I will say that uh, considering that you work, that the work that you put into uh, building this transmitter and the power output uh, so far it looks like the 10 minute transmitter is far better uh, with the power output and also the amount of work that you put uh, to build that transmitter but um, I think this would be a very nice uh, first project uh, first transmitter project and then maybe you can build the 10 minutes transmitter and get more excited that uh, you get a little bit more power output but you get to learn a lot about uh, <clears throat> transmitters and uh, building coils and stuff like that so yeah I would recommend you to try building it it's quite fun so thank you for watching and uh, I'll see you next time with uh, another interesting project that will basically uh, pair up with this um, CW transmitter and it's a video that I promised for quite a long time so I hope every um, Everybody that likes Morse code will be happy about uh, the next video. Until then, 73, I have a wonderful week.